Welcome back, everyone. Up next, we have Grace from Aggie. Aggie, take it away. Uh, welcome. This is going to be Grace, no out of any percent, no out of bounds, with the wonderful Tassel Foot as helping commentate. So we shall Hello. kick it off. Right. Let's end now. We shall kick it off right away in five, four, three, two, one, go. Uh, so Tassel, Definitely would good. You, would, you, yeah, would you mind explaining the basic premise of this game? Yeah, so Greece is a uh, kangaroo simulator. Uh, it is the story of a, uh, a girl who, who, as we're going to see in this cutscene, uh, her mother is passing, has passed away, and uh, she's going through the five stages of grief to kind of deal with uh, that death. And so we are going to travel through those five stages of duty. Those are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Glad I still remember that. Uh, and those are represented by the colors white, red, green, blue, and yellow. Uh, this Grease is a game by Spanish developer Nomada Studios. Uh, Greece is the Spanish word for gray. Uh, you will notice this game is all about the color design. Uh, definitely pay attention uh, because you will see colors as they move through one area to another and back again. Uh, and that is all about the story being told without any text whatsoever. Uh, to explain a little bit about this category, it's any percent, right? but there is one very particular out of bounds uh, glitch that is not allowed in this category. Right? That particular glitch saves about two to three minutes, but requires a down patch for it to work because 1.0 incredible, as it turns out, incredibly easy to get out of bounds. One of the interesting ways of doing it is you can skip the entire most the entirety of the first half of the loop, but you self block because you need to swim because you need to be able to swim. But that's getting way ahead of ourselves because we don't even have the ability to jump yet. But we will because this is a kangaroo simulator. Exactly. Uh, and basically, what we mean by that is that. You will see Aggie bunny hopping throughout uh, at least the first half of this run and decent chunks of the second half. Uh, like in a lot of games, Grease's movement is faster when uh, in the air and jumping than when on the ground. Uh, in this game, it's roughly 3% faster to jump um, and in the air. That number changes that's the number for when you're on solid ground uh it's actually even more faster if you're going up a hill um but we're also able to save uh, momentum going down certain hills and being able to jump off them so a lot of different ways that we can save time ah uh, so fun fact you can actually lose time in that starting set walking section if you try to jump in because well beast will just fall over and you lose about three to four seconds each time just from Grease trying to get back up. She's sad, man. She's very sad. And now we're on our way doing, doing our kangaroo simulator. So this is the denial section, uh, also known as white. It is pretty much the tutorial. Um, it's going to kind of show off the very basic movement of the game as well as showing the main collectible that you need to get progress throughout the game. We refer to them as stars. Um, there is two of them that we collect here and they will then form a bridge that allows us to get to the main hub of the game, which will then open up the other areas in order. Uh, and so this is about seven minutes and then the other four are kind of anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes each. Getting into our first cutscene, we're going to jump straight into it. 
because, well, walking is incredibly slow, and so we want to limit the amount of time that Grease is walking in cutscenes. Yeah, and by jumping into cutscenes, we can actually get a little bit into those cutscenes before it takes over. And uh, so each cutscene that you can jump into saves anywhere from about half a second to uh, two full seconds on the cutscene at the very end of Denial. And coming up, uh, there's some really, the first really satisfying movement of the game. Uh, after Aggie gets that second star, so there, uh, sorry, there are three stars here, not two. We're uh, we're gonna climb a big tower, and when you can nail the movement, jumping up the levels of this tower, super super satisfying. Yes, yeah, in this game, definitely boss fight. <laughs> Only if you get them wrong. Absolutely. And that was very clean. Say hello to the carpet monster. It's passing on by. My least favorite part of that particular jump down is clipping the is clipping the stout. The, yeah, clip, clipping the arm. Um, what's it? Platform at the end there, because you just lose literally all the momentum you gain. So, and there's going to be a hand here, uh, and this is the cutscene where you could lose two seconds if you walked right into it. Um, each area ends with jumping into a statue, and if you pay attention, you'll notice, again, part of the narrative being told through uh, the visuals and the audio is that the statue is actually going to get more and more complete. Uh, here in Denial, it's just a hand. When we finish Anger, there's going to be an arm, and it'll get more and more complete. This helps to symbolize Grease's journey towards acceptance over her mother's passing. And you can also see the, the color changes. There's now still white, but it's interspersed with a lot of red. It's our next staircase. Watch out for the hole. Oh no! The worst. Uh, that particular staircase, uh, it won. So there is almost no RNG in Greece, but we say that and then I'm, I'll give you a list of like the four places that there actually are RNG. Uh, and I mentioned that because we are in one of them right now. Depositing the stars into the heavens is actually RNG. It is hard coded in the game that they take a variable amount of time to go up into the sky. Why that is, we don't know. If you play this game casually, you would never ever notice. Uh, but as speedrunners, we noticed. And we do not like it. Oh, nice zip. So good. Yeah, uh, if you notice... Know because of my hills. I'm sorry, uh, continue. Uh, if you noticed, uh, it, that wasn't frames skipping, that Aggie kind of jumped ahead slightly. That's a zip. Um, it is a very small time save that can be done in a few places in the run. There are also negative zips that can push you backwards. But effectively, what it is is... The game is coded very forgivingly, but also the game doesn't like it if Grease jumps through a uh, diagonal plane. Effectively, um, Grease doesn't like having her head cut off. So if that happens, if you jump into a spot that has a diagonal plane, it will push you forward out of it, as long as it's a uh, left to right down slope. Uh, and that's the direction if you're going. If you're going in the opposite direction into it, it will push you backwards, and that's a negative zip that there's only one or two places in the game where we kind of have to actively avoid the negative zip, and there's a few places where we can kind of get some pretty big zips uh, out of it. And so uh, another staircase here for your enjoyment. You, you wouldn't like having your neck stuck on a platform either. 
tape. It wouldn't be very enjoyable. And, and just in case you forgot what the name of the game is, the game is very kind to us and tells us what tells us the name of the game. Just just like any real true artistic piece of work, the title card is not displayed until ten minutes in. Greece also has uh, no death. So if you fall from a large height, like Aggie did just there, there's kind of a falling and catching yourself mechanic and animation. Uh, there will also be a number of places throughout the run that you probably won't notice, but Aggie will be specifically manipulating their jump so that that, that animation doesn't play. It was quite a few seconds throughout the entirety of the run. And overall, Greece is a relatively straightforward um, and easy to pick up speed game. So it's very consistent with the lack of the RNG. There aren't a ton of tricks throughout it. There are certainly a few, and there are a number of tight cycles that you can make to save time as well. But overall, uh, runners are able to get fairly close to some of best in terms of PBs usually within like 15 to 20 seconds. So really anywhere that you can save half a second or a second uh, is really going to help. Uh, someone in chat wants to know why is the PC version? Um, we have an auto splitter for the PC version. So I think that just naturally makes it easier to speed run on. Other than that, um, the, the only difference between the PC and the Switch version uh, for the this category at least is I think there's like a seven second loading difference at the start. Okay. Yeah, it's about um, seven seconds. I don't I don't know about any other version since the the game were just originally released I believe on those two platforms and came to uh, PlayStation and Xbox later. But I would imagine that the delay in the opening initial load is less. Another small difference is in recent patches the maximum frame rate of the game on pc is is specifically tied to your monitor's frame rate is your monitor's refresh rate so if you have a 144 hertz monitor your maximum uh, frame rate will be 144 instead of 60. which can be good in some places but bad in other places so most runners i think the consensus is to stick to 60. Uh, Aggie's gonna do a didn't didn't get it, but one of the larger skips of the game is right here, um, and it's known as doing the Skylar shimmy to get the sandstorm skip. Uh, and effectively, you kind of have like one iframe when you land on the ground, and so you can kind of use the wind to keep pushing you further and further to the left, which actually gets you far enough where in conjunction with movement here, you can then eventually, you can skip um, a future one of these sandstorm cycles, uh, depending upon if you get the full skip or a partial skip, it saves either 13 or 15 seconds. Uh, but it is, it is definitely tricky. You only get one shot at it. Thankfully, there's no penalty for trying and failing it. we have a little bit of Owl's Moving Castle. So now is a perfect time for donations, any messages, if you have any. We have a whopping $50 from Big Fudge who says, what a fantastic weekend. Thanks for every, thanks to everyone for raising money for a great cause. Let's get that Ocarina of Time race. Speaking of that Absolutely. Ocarina of Time race, we have $208 left. We're 79% of the way there. If you want a donation to go towards that awesome race make sure you put it in the donation comments and we can add that for you so that was the cycle right there that aggie had to wait at that uh had sandstorm skip been pulled off uh they would have been able to just skip and just keep going straight through but i do appreciate you grabbing the free mentos look it's absolutely free so might as well take it the 
longer category in this game, uh, the quote-unquote 100%, is the all mementos. Uh, you, you saw one in the big rock creature. We actually just passed one as well uh, in, in that little rock cliff there. There are 28 of them scattered throughout the game, and that if you collect all 28 of them, there is a extra cutscene that has some additional lore at the end of the game. And the All Mementos category requires you to get all 28 plus watch that cutscene. Such a good cutscene, too. Definitely Highly worth recommend. collecting all the mementos. So we've gotten our first, technically second, power up right now. Since we are in anger, Aggie has gotten a angry power up. This is our heavy. And this is thick grease. Thick with three C's. That sandstorm there, absolutely 100% consistent. So you do about 12 and a half steps as thick grease to get through that sandstorm. Any less, you get flung all the way back to where the power up is. How do I know? I've done that multiple times. I think we all have, yeah. So that that's, that's a, effectively a scripted tutorial right there of teaching you how to use the heavy. This sequence as well. Um, and so that heavy has kind of two different uses. One, um, it allows you to not get blown back during wind sequences. There are some other spots in the game where wind gets used. Uh, and then the heavy can also break things. So now we have been taught both of these, and we are being taken uh, to the second half of Red. I'll stop to having a little tantrum. We're angry. Yeah. Very the, angry. Yeah, the second half of Red is the most cycle-based, uh, or one of the two mo really heavily cycle-based sections of the game. Mm. Right there is a, a good example of kind of the momentum jumping. And in my opinion, this is the hardest part of the game right here, is uh, climbing some more stairs again. Not actually, but um, I, I tend to fail this cycle way too often, and so uh, I think it's the hardest thing in the game. Well done, though, Aggie. <laughs> It's definitely one of the hardest thing, harder things to get down when you're starting with running the game. Uh, another one much. of our, yeah, Continue. another one of our pieces of RNG is this little rock guy that we're gonna meet here. Uh, their positioning is random, and depending upon if they are on the left or the right side, uh, it could lose up to about a second. Nice. Best RNG. There you go. There you go. You want that right side. So jumping up onto that left side platform there, it do it might not look it, but it's incredibly tight. Especially if you have the incredibly far to the left hand side. But the farther left you can do that heavy, um, the more time you'll save. Because uh, you're triggering the cycle earlier, and no matter what you do, assuming you don't really, really screw up, you are always going to make it back to this middle area early. So the less time you have to wait, the better. And there's also a little jump there that can save you a little bit of time. So you can do a coyote jump just as the platform begins to rise and you get enough momentum and height to get onto that platform slightly early. But if you miss it, I believe it's six seconds time yeah, loss. It, you lose an entire cycle. Uh, will you get the insta? Uh, I, got, I uh, got the answer and a practice wrong. <laughs> so um, another 
glitch in tech uh, of Greece that's kind of similar in theory to the Zips is an insta-heavy. Um, the same way Greece doesn't like her neck being cut off, um, she doesn't like to go thick uh, and heavy inside other objects. So if you can frame perfectly, get, do a heavy either off of a ledge or into the edge of a breakable object, the game will instantly heavy uh, and the will effectively negate the animation, saving roughly half a second each time you're able to uh, get it, one of those insta-heavies. Oh, oh, nice. Um, that there is, it's not RNG, um, but it is determined based upon whether or not you are clean with all of your movement and cycles up to that point. Kind of if you're off pretty much anywhere, that rock creature will be out of cycle and you'll have to wait for them to come back. It may or may not make you lose the entire, lose an entire cycle. When yeah, you come pretty, back to the center. pretty much waiting there um, winds up meaning that the cycle here in the center when we come back here uh, is also going to be off. So really the the because of how cycle dependent and interdependent the cycles are throughout this section um missing one cycle even by a second really snowballs your time loss uh and can oh there's there's an insta heavy and now aggie races up uh to get a nice little skip as well there you go uh, normally, like, if you're playing this casually, you have to heavy that balloon back down, but if you're fast enough, you can, uh, just, just jump across. And Aggie, uh, made every single cycle here. Really, really, really clean second half of red. Just the giant ferris wheel to go. It is one of the cases where you don't want to zip. I've done it a couple of times and you just fall off the ferris wheel if you do it badly, if you do the bad zip. So somewhere along the line, it was patched in to make this heavy right there um, friendlier. That looked like an Insta. It was, was that? It yeah, was absolutely thought so. Insta. <laughs> Definitely. That's awesome. So two Instas in there. Um, in the 1.0 version of the game, if you accidentally just walk off that ledge, you won't have enough momentum to trigger the Ferris wheel and you'll have to do it all over again. But in current patch, which this category is run on, um, it was made more forgiven. I think like very early on uh, in the patching, uh, that was added in. And so even if you just walk right off the ledge and then heavy, you still have enough momentum uh, to trigger it, which is really nice. Um, mo a lot of stuff is very forgiving throughout this game. And we take advantage of that to go uh, even faster than we otherwise could. And again, notice the hand statue here, that there's arms, uh, is getting more and more complete, as mentioned previously. Demic life. Starting to come back into the world. Another really cool feature uh, about this game is that the whole game is effectively one large map. And so everything is interconnected and we are now traveling back to the hub again. Um, and then there's going to be a bunch of movement to the left, which is actually traveling over top of the white 
uh, denial area of the game to get to the main bargaining area. Uh, and now here is the most hotly contested part of the run that Aggie has uh, has decided to skip as per usual. Oops. There, there's a pot right there with some birds in it and, that we don't need until uh, like 45 minutes from now, but a lot of runners will break the pot on their way to this hub and then another handful of runners are like, yeah, we'll break it later. So it doesn't save or lose any time. It uh, it just transfers when you spend a, a second and a half to break that pot. And can be very confusing when comparing some of bests for IL segments. Now we're crossing over the bridge into bargaining. Yeah. Such destructive burps. How, how dare they destroy the bridge. But it's a cool little piece of design because now they've blocked your way back. Now let's see if we can get the insta. No, almost. That looks pretty good. Is that yeah. uh, half half insta? Yeah, it was half. It's definitely half insta. So we are now just bopping through the forest. The old forest friends, little dragonflies. And There's the colors, and every single color we have so far dispersed throughout. Even white, as, as the fog. So yeah, that that jump uh, for new runners is very scary to kind of one cycle that little segment right there. We don't think it was intended to be one cycled, but again, it's kind of one of those forgiving game design from Nomada that allows us to uh, kind of jump even as that platform disappears. Because again, it's meant to be a tutorial for the player that now you have these blocks that are on cycles that will automatically come and go. And so it's meant to force you to wait for that, but we don't have time for that. Look, look we're, go we're going to speed run through this. We we go we're going to go fast and go through imagine, the other side. Imagine waiting in a speed run. Imagine. You do actually have to wait uh, on this just a little bit, as Aggie did. Um, I, I know I certainly have gone too fast on those cycles and been ahead of it and just jumped straight through a square tree. Yeah, I've done that many, many times. The best part is you, you can jump onto these while they're forming. A lot of just really uh, forgiving design, but it, it, as we take advantage of it, we utilize it and then kind of get ahead of it again. So it's good, but also sometimes not so good. Sometimes you gotta go slow to go fast. Hello, friend. Hello. Wonderful until we go Until we go too fast and he's just no longer on screen anymore. But that's Macaroni. He's our forest friend who likes apples. Why is his name Macaroni, you ask? Well, um, he's got a couple feathers in his head. And if you're, if you know, I know you guys are all Australian, so I don't know how familiar you are with the American song Yankee Doodle Dandy, uh, but in Yankee Doodle, Yankee Doodle has a feather in his cap, and he calls it macaroni 
and macaroni was like an old timey word for something being really cool. And so our little rock guy here has three feathers in his head. And I thought that was pretty macaroni. So here is another small portion of RNG. Macaroni can take its sweet time eating apples. Yep, again, another one of those things of like, why is there RNG here? But pretty much any time macaroni does anything, be it eat an apple or open up a door for us, there is the... The macaroni can either instantly do it or wait one second before doing it. And I think there's only one other piece of RNG left that we haven't mentioned uh, in the game, which will be coming up in the next section. Now, because we've uh, fed macaroni, macaroni will now do exactly what we do. But a couple of seconds behind us. Friend. Do we have a couple of seconds for some donations? Absolutely. Go for it. Awesome. We have $5 here from Mikami who says, love you, Aggie. Put this towards Aggie's choice. Put it towards the Ocarina of Time race. The Ocarina the of Time race? Awesome. Maker. Awesome. We also have a hundred dollars here from Club Who, who says the graphics already have the Ocarina of Time run loaded. We need to hit the incentive. We are so close, everyone. Money to Ocarina of Time, of course. Just a quick update on that one. We now a hundred and three dollars away from meeting that incentive. We are so so close to getting it. If you want to get in and if you want to see the Ocarina of Time defeat Ganon the SRM race between Trip and Mikami. Exclamation mark donate in the chat. So one thing I have I haven't mentioned so far. At the end of this run, I will donate the the final time I get to whatever incentive hasn't been met yet. Oh, so we have two bid wars and one uh, goal. So all of this time has effectively been to travel here to kind of the uh, the gateway of bargaining. Where we need to again collect two stars. You have another section where platforming is quite tight and very easy to lose time, like there. It is probably one of my favorite sections, especially with the next part coming up. Yeah, this there. there's so many sections of this game where if you kind of hit everything cleanly, it's so satisfying in movement. There is another good, another good bunch of momentum you can get. Say goodbye to macaroni, though. Won't be seeing macaroni for the rest of the run. And that's very sad. It is very sad. So coming up here is... You would think it's counterintuitive for a speedrunner to kind of not like this puzzle, but... So whenever you jump, the platforms will change. And so, so you kind of can't just jump willy-nilly because you're just going to fall down and lose time because it just makes you th think a little bit yeah for whatever reason this mechanic is only here in this one little tiny area these red trees do not appear anywhere else in the game But Aggie is a pro. Aggie is a pro and has all of these tree cycles lined up.
Ah. You guys were all scared for a second. But now we're getting a new power up. We are going to be able to float. And we have the power of birds. So the float power up gives us a double jump. Um, and the second jump is a floaty, slow falling uh, jump as long as you continue to hold your jump button. Um, now, this does impact our bunny hopping a bit because the second jump and floating is the same speed as walking. It's only the first jump pre-float that gains that 3% speed. So we do try to single jump as much as possible, but we have now lost our ability to buffer our jump inputs like we were able to do in the first half of the run. So, and our very last piece of RNG is coming up right here, um, after this, right here. Ooh. Got to Ooh. RNG. Got the good RNG, which is not common. Most of the time you get the bad one. And now Aggie is gonna do some really tight platforming to get fast trees and then hopefully double fast trees. So I can go on and get it. Oh yeah. With Perfect. time to spare too. So getting getting the, the double fast trees is very, very tight. And then along with the, the good RNG is incredibly nice. That's so. not going to happen ever again. <laughs> Another thing that we can... Yeah. Sorry, ah, go ahead, Aggie. Okay. Yeah. So one thing with those bunch of uh, birds there is if you're not careful, you can actually miss the ones right near the top and go falling all the way, way back down. I've done that before. It's not fun. Oh, I, I've done it before too. Yeah, they um it, they go from basically being everywhere to kind of sparsing out a bit at the top. Um, I was also gonna say now that we have the double jump and we have these birds, um, we actually get to jump cancel out of the birds, which uh, will get used in a few different places to to save time. Yeah, it's pretty much just um, always used to transition vertical momentum into horizontal. Say hello to Angry Burb. Very angry. Every, everybody's favorite video game. One thing that's really cool here is you can get the boat to scream at you slightly early. It saves absolutely no time whatsoever. I just think it's really cool. So that right there going through that tower was an example of, uh, a, of a jump cancel that definitely saves time and also negates uh, a fall animation. Enough, we have a trick called bird blow if you'd like to explain that yeah so uh basically it's kind of a puzzly little maneuver where you use the bird uh to actually push us in the correct direction so that we can clear a gap 
and casually you would want to get blown to the middle plat middle tree and then get blown a second time but there's sort of some weird trigger hitboxes where the bird will blow twice and then will instantly and quickly blow a third time so there's no delay there which um there was a, a not too long ago a new method of triggering bird blow that aggie just did that pretty much turned the trick from about a 75 percent success rate to almost and basically a hundred percent success rate so uh bird blow went from a trick that it saves three seconds to to be able to get that fast second blow um so you don't have to wait in the middle platform but it used to if you failed it would lose either seven or ten seconds depending upon how you failed it so pretty much going to making it uh an incredibly consistent trick has just freely saved uh and completely saved three seconds for everyone because it used to be a trick that a lot of folks wouldn't go for just due to the inconsistency of it yeah such good, it was such a good find by saver yeah, shoutouts to Saver, who has speedrun this game blindfolded. Uh, and they, they're they the ones that found that trick, uh, that setup for it, as part of their routing and planning for blindfolded speedrun. And this is the boss fight. Very, very nice on the, uh, the consistent bottom there. Oh, didn't didn't get the the trigger. I I actually don't know how to do that anymore because I pretty much have only been running any percent for marathons, and uh, it's it's actually different in the 1.0 version of the game. It's one of the other very few changes. So I only know and remember how to do the 1.0 version of that top fight, but. Um, you got it triggered eventually, and your reward is more stairs. Boss fight. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, as a non-violent game, the that this the the game is still able to get two boss quote unquote boss fights um, into it still is is really nice um and they and they fit the narrative really well um because again this was the, the the bargaining section but if you notice there was a lot of red that came back into the art design there at the top uh and so the bird is is both angry is confused um and it really shows that the there's a misnomer about there being five stages of grief because a stage kind of um, signifies that it's a straight line progression, whereas in reality it's more of the five emotions of grief. And this game does a great job of portraying that it's not always a straightforward journey through those emotions, that sometimes we have to take a couple of steps backwards on that journey, and the, the bird boss flight is kind of a great example of that because it's far more anger than it is bargaining. Nope. Oh. Might be too early. No, no fast glide. So out, there's a blind jump that you can make inside that tower that will save a second and a half if you hit it. Um, it's a pretty small window. We don't know exactly what it is, but it's probably about a tenth of a second window. Um, and if you're early or late, either way, it, lo it loses about a second and a half. It's more satisfying to go early than late. Yeah, because you don't really want to fall in the water. Um, so one thing of note, now that we're in depression, we have water. Uh, the water and the rain falling has shown us these um, platforms in the sky and throughout that were previously invisible and we can now go on them. But if we go into the water, it is the slowest way of traveling for the game, so we want to be getting out of the water as quickly and as frequently as possible.
definitely don't want to be doing doggy paddles for a substantial amount of time. To be fair, I think, you know, it. we, we have such a lovely dress uh, that it. I imagine it would be very heavy to yeah. get it wet like that. Absolutely. So pretty much everywhere we will, uh, Aggie will instantly jump out of the water as quickly as possible. Let's go see ourselves over the water with the burps. Indeed. Almost back. Uh, and also of note, this area of all of the water here, this is actually denial that we are traveling back over again. And denial is now underwater. So it is, it is the third time that we have crossed denial. The introductory time, um, traveling over it to get to bargaining, and now traveling back through it after bargaining to get back to the hub again. Is with the 28 mementos, one of them is in fact in that water, but you yeah. can only get it after finishing this current section because we need another power up. A little turtle course, foreshadowing, yeah. But foreshadowing the best MP one of the best NPCs in the game, arguably, arguably the best. Definitely top two. Yeah, absolutely. Coming up to what I think is definitely one of my, is absolutely, one of my favorite tricks. Oh yeah. You can't. So. Yeah, if you um if you do that normally, you basically you'll heavy and you'll break and you'll fall straight through and you'll go very deep into the water below there uh and slowly rise out, which takes I think about 5 full seconds, but again, the game is forgiving, so it allows you actually to trigger the break while still standing on the edge. Um and so then you can just fall down and float in and uh, and save that five seconds. Another um, aspect of this entire section, this first half of blue, which is we kind of the cavern, is that it's all on one very large cycle. So we are traveling down to an ice cavern, and the ice uh, cycle starts when we get through that turtle uh, image that was at the start of the cavern. And it will just continue to flash at eight second intervals from there. So basically this is kind of a, uh, a four minute section here. Uh, note how beautiful the backgrounds are here. Uh, it is a four minute long section that we can only save or lose time in eight second intervals. In order to get the fastest cycle, you need to play absolutely perfectly throughout the entire four minute segment. Yeah, um, it is incredibly hard. Um, I think I, I hit fastest cycle twice, uh, and the world record holder Skylar has hit it a number of times, but um, have you hit it in a run before, Aggie? Absolutely not. <laughs> So, yeah, I think Skylar and I are the only ones that have ever hit it in a run. It's a little bit easier in ILs. Uh, there's about, I think, an extra, like, two seconds of leeway in the ILs versus in the um, the full game any percent run just due to where you spawn to start and where that cycle starts. But um, incredibly, incredibly hard. So most runners just try to go for fast cycle. Which Aggie is well on their way to getting. 
the ice cavern also houses another really difficult trick that only Skylar goes for. Because it's it is a really insane. cool trick. Yeah, I love the trick so much, but it's really difficult. That it's it is. It's also one of the tricks that is harder to do on 144 FPS. As opposed to doing it at 60, apparently. But that's not a trick. And there we go. Made fast cycle. So this is these ice caverns are pretty much the most puzzly sections of the entire game. Um, and they're still not particularly puzzly. Uh, I would not I don't think anyone would really call Greece a difficult game casually, but it is certainly a beautiful and moving experience. Tell me up and to a fantastic the yeah. beginner okay. speed run. So tell me up to the right hand side of Ice Cavern. There is a very difficult trick that you can go for. On a very specific frame, you can see where the yep. uh, star is housed. You can clip straight through that on a very specific frame if you heavy and have the ice statue form one of her. It is incredibly precise and very incredibly difficult to get. Yep. Uh, so it's the, it's kind of similar logic to what you use in the 1.0 version to clip out of bounds, because that is where the out of bounds clip happens uh, to skip this whole upcoming section. But instead, it's used to kind of clip into that star and grab it without having to do that right side piece. Um, but incredibly difficult to do. We can now swim, and all of a sudden, water is the fastest way to travel instead of the slowest way to travel. Um, it's it's I, I don't think we even really think of it as a trick anymore, but instead, uh, the right side of that ice cavern, uh, Aggie did pull off the two cycle casually if you're trying to go through or if you're speedrunning this with kind of no knowledge. Um, you're going to find getting that in two cycles to be incredibly difficult, if not impossible, and you're going to three cycle it. Uh, that is because, again, as has been mentioned, this game is very forgiving and lenient. Uh, you can actually leave your heavy before the visuals of the of getting frozen happens. And that little extra time of leaving it early gives you enough time to get your heavy down below the platform and make that two cycle uh and we do use that in one or two other places as well to kind of skip a cycle one place uh very much in particular so one thing that's really worth no worth noting here is when you swim and change direction you immediately reset your your swim dash. So it's incredibly useful in some places, like here, and entering or, or leaving water or changing direction. But it's not so. But normally it's not fastest. Well, it is incredibly fast, but not for just regular moving through water, because it would require effectively task level precision should be able to do it all the time yeah if you could do it frame perfectly it would be faster for um swimming straight forward but because none of us are able to do that it's not worth it to re reset your swim dash um when just moving naturally forward uh but it is worth it if you're at the edge of a area and leaving the water um, because again, now water is significantly faster than moving on land. And so you, and because you preserve momentum, you get that nice boost out of the water, uh, which there are actually even ways to kind of further enhance it by kind of doing your double jump out of it. Uh, and you can kind of doubly preserve that momentum. Really nice tower climb there. 
can be very tricky uh, learning how to properly move in and out of the water there. That is definitely a skip. And the turtle cutscene skip, too. Um, because that the our friend Turtle here that we have now awoken um, it runs in an auto scroller fixed rate. By getting lower down, um, we are able to get ahead of Turtle and thereby be at the entrance point that he unlocks um, faster. It saves like three seconds. And getting that heavy into the cutscene there saves an extra two seconds. But we're coming up to sort of the end of Depression uh, as we jump into our mother's butt. Statues. It must, it statues must hurt back so much. It's always weird to me that the hand and the quote-unquote end of this chapter is here. Just because, um, well, we have a boss fight coming up. And then we have a long travel section, so it, it really feels more that this is part two of three as opposed to being the end. If anyone uh, doesn't want to miss anything but needs a bathroom break, this is a perfect time. Speaking of bathroom breaks, do we have time for a couple more donations? Absolutely. Perfect. We have $25 here from Anonymous who says, Defeat Ganon Race Incentive, baby. Let's go. We have $20 from Benedictator. It says, almost there. Let's get that Ocarina of Time. Both of those donations bring us dangerously close to reaching that goal. We are $58 away. 94% of the way to hitting that $1,000 goal. Have the Legend of let's Zelda Ocarina of Time. Defeat Ganon no SRM at the end of the marathon. Hey, let's get it. <laughs> if you also want to join in the fun and donate... A few dollars towards Cure Cancer, SMH Mark Donate or donate.speedruns.com. Even though it may seem that the statue was complete, it is in fact not the case whatsoever. As when Grace attempted to sing, Everything that we'd worked towards crumbled to pieces as we have, as the bird came back and is now an eel. Right. See this this bird being able to shape shift like that? Su super jealous. I'm, I'm, I'm super jealous of this eel. But also scared. There, there is a um, a really weird uh, small skip that I think I'm the only one that's ever done it, and it's only happened randomly. But twice uh, was able to basically skip an entire bite sequence, and so never had to slow down to make sure that I like didn't get bitten into it. No idea how it triggered. Um, but had it happened twice ever in all of my runs. You are the only person that I've seen have it happen to. Now we get the interlude in the boss fight. This is pretty much just a memorization section, uh, if you want to be able to do it fast. I basically memorize the amount of dashes I need to do for each bit. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I did as well. Oh no! Oh no. Ah! Sneaky eel. Always getting this. When we least expect it.
Oh, I thought you were going for good. And shout out to Berlinist. Uh, they are the orchestral group that did the composition of all of the music in this game. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. Such, such a good soundtrack. I love it so much. Ties everything together incredibly well. Oh no, we're about to get eaten. There's only one thing that can save the day. Turtle! Good guy, Turtle. Best friend, Turtle. And su such a metal turtle. Breaking through the just, base of the eel like that. Just exploding the eel's head and then and then we just goodbye bye peace out peace out turtle now we're back on the back on the big backtrack section back to the hub but you can already start seeing little speckles of yellow interspersed in here that is showing that even though we haven't started the acceptance area we are already starting to transition into it which is pretty consistent with the other areas of the game where our backtrack has already started to showcase the upcoming section And I really quite like this light section because it's it it teaches you the one of the puzzles that we're going to absolutely skip in a little bit. We're gonna skip stuff. Yeah, we're gonna skip. The, we're gonna skip an entire. We're gonna skip an entire puzzle. We would do that. I know, right? Blasphemy. YOLO! Saves exactly one second. But loses a whole bunch of time if you fail it. Oh yeah, if you miss the YOLO jump, you fall back into the, the water and have to go all the way around again. I found that accidentally and nearly pooped my pants upon discovering it. Now we get to travel through that beautiful scene that I called out earlier. As we dance through the water squares. So that's another spot where Aggie intentionally stopped, refreshed the dash, and then jumped out of the water. Otherwise, they likely would have triggered the cutscene in the water itself, which would wind up being very slow to get out of afterwards. Everything seems almost complete. Uh, I feel like I feel, I, I, this is your punishment right here for not yep, breaking know, the pot right? earlier. <laughs> So the final section of the game. And absolutely my favorite part of the game because of how intricate everything is. It's definitely the hardest part of the speed run, especially, and I, I would say especially the second half, but the second half is really only incredibly hard because of one trick and one room. Whereas the time save or time loss that you can get here in the first half purely off of movement um, is really, really large. The It has the highest skill ceiling on movement in, uh, for any part of the game. I 
possibility because there's so many just tiny optimizations that you can have along the way with this. So we're getting introduced to the yellow birds, which are the timed birds. Not that we are ever really in danger of losing one of those timed bird cycles. Uh, again, as I've reiterated and said, um, the game is pretty forgiving for the casual player experience. This is one of my favorite places to do movement uh, in and out of these water squares. Be satisfying to retain all that momentum. Yep, you can as you as as you dash out of the water there and then double jump. You can serve the momentum and super satisfying. But it's not even my favorite movement section of this section of the game. The Australian section is my favorite. And I'm not even pandering to the crowd. Because you'll see what happens very soon. One thing that wasn't mentioned before with those fireflies, as soon as you have it, the light disappears. Oh, we actually have to wait a little bit, uh, because you do left side first. Yep. Just, uh, I just feel like you do everything backwards, Aggie. Alright. So but it doesn't save game or game lose games. any time. It's It really is runner's preference um, which direction you go. Especially with the first half. Right? With, with the second half, at best, you're saving less than a second. So even then, it makes almost no difference. Save the frames, though. More stairs. More stairs. I really like how this section reuses the elements both in the first and second half of the area. It's the only section of the game that does that. And so this line, uh, it flips gravity. Normally there, you're meant to jump out, jump onto that little light and reverse gravity again. Just entirely skip that entirely. Entirely. Yeah. Get that bit. Because of just uh, getting out of the water very slightly. And now we're actually getting to the we're getting to the really fun bit of this action. I clearly do left side press just to save at the moment. Nice dolphining. We're coming up on my favorite movement in the whole game. This this sequence uh, right here, which I have now dubbed the Australian sequence. Here we go.
Sweet. One, it looked like one tiny little bobble movement underwater, but um, otherwise really, really clean there. Satisfying to pull off. And now we have- Are you doing right side or, or left side? Uh, left side first. Oh, oh boy. But now we can sing again. Yeah, so you'll notice, again, there's no text in this game. Uh, Greece does not speak in any way. Again, it's because of her grief and her loss. It kind of took her voice and her breath away. But now, as we are getting acceptance and recovering uh, our last power-up, we have gotten our ability to sing back again. And we can um, bring things to life, which I think there's a Disney character um, is that like Cinderella or something, uh, brings things to life through singing or song? Uh, something like that. Uh, this cutscene's cool because you get a free insta-heavy out of it. If you position yourself correctly. Well done on the free insta-heavy. Do we have another couple of minutes? Absolutely, go for it. Awesome. Oh, this is going to be fun. We just had $50 from Tassel Ford. It says, good job, Aggie. Incentive Ocarina of Time, which brings it down to $8. But then we had $7.69. Can I get a nice in the chat from Neo, who says Ocarina of Time Incentive, which put us 31 cents off the incentive being reached. Then we had $20.31 from Benedictator, who says... 31 cents towards Ocarina of Time, $20 towards Code Lyoko, name selection, YOLO Swag. A vote for Team YOLO Swag is a vote for victory. And then we had $5 from Notpo. He says, hey, Rosie here. Aggie's run is looking really clean. I hope they finish strong. Put this towards defeat Ganon, no SRM. That means we have hit the $1,000 The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, defeat Ganon, no SRM race after Code Lyoko. Hell yeah. Awesome stuff. So, and Aggie, uh, Aggie just did a skip right there. It is an incredibly easy skip to do. You can do it at home. Um, normally with that puzzle, you are supposed to go upside down and trigger all of those flowers to be able to reach the second, uh, the middle of the bottom flowers. But if you um, just mash your, your jump button to get the jump cancel out of the birds, uh, you can very easily make it without ever having to flip upside down and trigger those upside down Australian flowers. No, we, we never we never visit those flowers. We certainly try not to. I don't actually know how much time that saves because it's so free that I have never timed it out on what the casual way of doing it is and and how long it takes uh too long it's it's probably about 10 or 12 seconds yeah but aggie is saving the most fun trick for last also the hardest trick in the run by far by far Do you want to explain that, or do you want me to? Uh, definitely for you to explain once we get there. Okay. Right now, we're about to awaken a spider. So we we can't reach the we can't reach those flowers from here. So we're gonna need a little bit of help. And so the spider just moves toward us at all times. Aggie's doing some swag. So the left side, we did that skip. That's the flower room. That skip is free. 
we are coming up on the bug room and there's actually it's actually two skips so doing the bug room casually is going to be a two cycle and each one of the cycles for the bug platform going up and down is 10 seconds uh and so doing a one cycle bug room basically requires the doing the trick that i mentioned in ice cavern where you kind of leave your action early before it triggers and so in this instance it's leaving a thing early and triggering the platform and being able to still jump up and make the platform which uh aggie pulls off right there that's one cycle no cycle uh oh so close so basically to do no cycle there uh is a double frame perfect trick uh the first part of it you have to coyote jump uh off of the edge one frame off of the edge uh to get the coyote jump and then pretty much it's about two frames after two or three frames after you transition and flip over you then have to hit your jump button to be able to perfectly float and just barely make that platform without ever going upside down to trigger the top side of it but uh yeah double frame perfect trick incredibly incredibly hard um uh it is it is not consistent for any runner but uh doing the one cycle saves 10 seconds doing the no cycle saves an additional 23 seconds so you gotta love your biggest time save and your hardest trick an hour and 15 minutes into the run everybody's favorite yeah it's not it's, it's like ah uh, it's it's it, it's super nerve-wracking when you're on bb base i think i think we have all lost significant numerous uh pb run attempts you know two no cycle attempts although uh i think only the top th I, I think it's just skylar myself and aggie who even attempt no cycle at all yep. just because it's of how difficult it is and we're the only three that have pulled it off in a rut so we're we're just about done uh with the emotions but we are not quite done with the game just deposit the last of our stars into the sky the world this priest is clearly a magician so we're kind of entering the final area technically two areas uh known as black and then purple um and this is really just the the finale um your the the movement and the tech and any tricks are are very limited uh there's a lot of cutscenes here at the end that just kind of wrap up the plot so I think for the most part uh i don't think we're going to have too much to say and it's just mostly going to be to enjoy the cinematics the one thing that's really interesting here is grace would normally walk to the edge of the platform for this cutscene to start but i'm not sure why that grace is just standing there in this specific in this instance The, the big reveal here, though, is that the bird and the eel, the bosses that we fought against, uh, they were actually us all along. They were our own inner demons that we were fighting with. Uh, 
and even though we you know we climbed the light uh it is not over yet you know we kind of had a, a bit of a meltdown here at the end we've swallowed ourselves whole and we need to swim back up and out of the darkness and unfortunately we, we don't have the ability to super swim but the worst If you watch hard enough here, sometimes that statue blinks. I'm I mean, just kidding. If you're watching hard enough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it would be really creepy if it did. Isn't her head? Oh, you were very far right there. Yep. A, a quick little song there to remember mom by uh, to bring the flowers on her coffin very sad uh, it is a time loss but for marathon runs I think all of us do that as just kind of a, you know a way to say goodbye mom absolutely worth the time loss I think also all of us uh, at one point or another have missed a jump uh, climbing up the statue here and fallen halfway or all the way back down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Very easy to do. But now, let's see. You get to enjoy the best cutscene of the game. Hope everyone had a nice cry. That cutscene always sends a shiver down my spine. Even after all this time running the game. It's that powerful. <laughs> but now we are on our final climb. 
as we say goodbye to Mom for the final time. And time will be coming up when the screen turns black. GG, what a beautiful run there. That was incredibly good of a run there, Aggie. Uh, with with the two major skips missed, that was ridiculously clean outside of that. So, incredible oh. job. Thank you. Thanks, Tess, for the amazing commentary. It helped Happy to watch that run. Thank you, all speedruns, for ha for having me. That was really good, and well, and we also hit the uh, Ocarina of Time defeat Ganonron, so that's absolutely phenomenal. We did very, very, very good. That was a beautiful run there, Aggie. And again, Tassel, that was great commentary. Both of you performed beautifully. But don't don't go away, anyone. We will be right back very shortly with some Bioshock action.